have another attractive young lady. Boy, this is my lucky day, huh? Well, she's nine years old. Ew. I'm Jim Fritz. I need all you dozens of viewers out there to just tell me how you like this, all right? Hey friends. So the other day I was scrolling through Instagram as one does and I happened upon one of my favorite Instagram accounts, Totally 80s Room. If you're not following them, you should be. They post incredible stuff from the 80s. And even though I was born in 1989 and I don't remember the 80s very much, it's still just, it feels like home, you know? So they posted this clip of this very distinguished gentleman. I love you. I honestly love you. And I was like, this is so 80s and vhs -y and amazing. And I noticed on the wall behind the gentleman, this sign that says Stairway to Stardom. And I thought, wait a second. Did I just finally find the name of the show that featured Henrietta and Myrna singing Go Tell It on the Mountain? I've seen that clip so many times, but I never knew where it was from. And I was like, I think this is the show. So I looked up Stairway to Stardom on YouTube and turns out it is not the show that featured Henrietta and Myrna. However, I found something much, much better, meaning worse and more uncomfortable. I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable. So I find this YouTube channel, it's literally called Stairway to Stardom, and they have what appears to be every single full episode of the show. And I sat there and watched what felt like a hundred episodes. And I was absolutely not prepared for what I saw. From the wacky performers to the insanely creepy hosts. Can I be your boyfriend? Can I be your girlfriend? To the non-existent budget that resulted in the entire show being filmed in somebody's basement i knew i had found something really really gross you thought i was gonna say special but i said gross can i have a kiss huh oh oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> like i said the whole show being filmed in i guess the host's basement it just doesn't help the creepiness of the situation we absolutely have to talk about this i am so shocked that there's no other youtuber i could find that made a video about this and i have so much to say so get ready to wish autotune had existed in the 70s Julia. And let us ascend the stairway to stardom right after today's delicious sponsor. Today's video is kindly brought to you by Factor. Factor makes healthy eating super easy by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. If you're too busy this time of year to be cooking and meal planning and chopping, these bad boys are literally ready in two minutes and there's absolutely no prep and no cleanup. What about your dirty fork? Where? You said no cleanup. Oh, besides your fork. Looking for special occasion meals this time of year? Level up with Factor's Gourmet Plus options. Prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Enjoy premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. Personally, I've been using Factor long before I ever partnered with them. I found them on TikTok, and it has been an absolute godsend, especially when I'm trying to stick to low carb because they have all sorts of dietary filters you can apply. I choose keto, so all of my stuff has low carb. Pull it out, perforate the plastic, remove the cup if there is one, in the microwave for two minutes and you're on your way to deliciousness. Mm. So if you guys are interested in checking out Factor, you can head to factor75.com and use code Jamie50 at checkout, which will get you 50% off your first box. That's a steal. Again, friends, that's factor75.com. And when you're checking out, use code Jamie50 and you'll save 50% off of your first box or click the link in my description box down below. Nick's telling me to smile, but I just don't smile. <laughs> Head to factor 75com <laughs> Hey kids, we're back. So I'm gonna read you the description of this show straight from Wikipedia, okay? Taped in what appeared to be a freshly carpeted Staten Island basement, the host Frank Massey would bring on amateur singers, dancers, actresses, and comedians to perform. So it is exactly what it sounds like. This guy Frank Massey and his wife Tilly shot a TV show in their basement and just invited random people to come perform. And by people, I mean mostly children. How come you're so pretty? Now, Frank Massey passed away um, several years ago. He's not here to defend himself, okay? I know that. So I'm not gonna make any accusations, but we absolutely have to talk about this absolute creep fest sketchball behavior. First things first, in the very first episode that I watched, he asks this little girl for a kiss. Can I have a kiss? Huh? Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. And I was like, wait a minute, is this the same guy that Patrick CC did a video about like last year or something? So I looked it up, turns out it is not the same guy. That guy's name was Fergie. And as we know, this guy is Frank, so. 
Frank and Fergie, the kid kissing uh, TV show hosts. Wouldn't be the last ones, unfortunately. So this guy, Frank, in every single episode that I watched, he asked one of the little girls for a kiss. And guys, look, I some say that I'm the reigning queen of giving people the benefit of the doubt, sometimes to a fault, okay? I tried really hard to view this behavior as like, oh, maybe this is an innocent grandpa e type of, no. He is very, very open about why exactly he wants to kiss these children. You married? Oh, what, can I be your boyfriend? Are you married? No. No, you're not married. She's not married. Hey, she's not married. <laughs> and it actually gets worse than that, if you can believe it. It also tripped me up that the wife seemed to be equally as creepy. Not e maybe not equally as creepy. She didn't kiss the kids as much as Frank did, but she did make a lot of the little boys kiss her. You're gonna get all the kisses, and I'm not. Can I have a kiss? Oh, okay. <laughs> so not only did she ask these kids for kisses and ask if she could be their girlfriend and stuff. Can I be your girlfriend? But she also seemed to really egg her husband on in the grossness oh okay. you're surrounded okay. with all, all these the beautiful children, yeah. girls i know you got all the girls ne know, next yeah. t uh, next time i'm going to get all the boys uh -huh. and i'm going we to get all the kids another <laughs> terrific who gave these people a show? <laughs> Again, in my pursuit to give this gentleman the benefit of the doubt i was really hoping like well maybe he kisses everybody like maybe it's not just specific to children i got my hopes up when he kissed this lady who looked to be like i don't know 26 years old i'm gonna be 14 on mother's day what what is this phenomenon where people used to look older isn't there like a whole video about this on youtube floating around somewhere like did people used to look older even like her her voice and her overall performance and everything made me think she was in like her late 20s i asked auntie one of my editors i was like how old do you think this girl is and he was like Maybe late 20s. But no, she's 14 years old, like I said, so naturally Frank wanted to kiss her. Do I get a kiss? Sure. Oh, okay. well, you get all the kisses oh, today. How about that? And yes, it actually gets even worse than that, if you can believe it. But before we get into that, I want to introduce Jennifer, the 11 year old dancer that the hosts are far too eager about. Isn't she beautiful? She's okay. Oh, look at her eyes. Did huh? you take a look at her eyes? No, I didn't. They're beautiful. Oh, yeah, they, They're they so are. Big and beautiful. So Jennifer comes out, and like the rest of the show, it's just quite uncomfortable because really what we're doing is watching a little girl dancing in a leotard in a grimy basement in front of three grown men and two pervy hosts. The drummer and the piano player are like kind of watching. The trumpet player just looks down the entire time, probably the only one that was like, does anybody else feel like a creep? Can I have a kiss? Mm. Okay, thank you. Isn't she beautiful? Did yeah, you see her yeah. eyes? I feel bad for the band members because it's just not their fault. It's not their show, you know? It's Frank's fault. <laughs> so I'm watching this feeling pretty bummed out. I'm like, where's all the hilarious clips that I've seen people sharing on Instagram? And thankfully after watching like a zillion episodes, I found some, I found some gems. Like I said in the beginning, most of the performers were children, but not all of them were. Frank had many adult guests on as performers, but he also had the band. <laughs> Tony Guccio trio, Tony Guccio on piano. Hal Green on drums and Claude Dunson on trumpet. The band was there for every episode and Frank would often have them like play instrumentals, you know, to fill the hour time slot. My favorite one was when the drummer actually started singing. But I can't get started with you. You know, it's hard to sing and drum at the same time, which is probably why he doesn't look very enthused throughout the whole performance. He is literally blank face to the entirety of every episode. And I just feel like he's sitting there like, I'd rather have a beer. These kids suck. You guys may think you've seen the worst of the show. And I thought the same, okay? Until I started really watching the adults perform. The adults are somehow so much worse than the children. My personal favorite was this lady, Eileen Heyman, who instead of singing, dancing, or like doing stand-up comedy as her talent, she did a puppet show. to do that i want to be your friend can i be your friend you know eileen i think it's a solid effort and probably could have been a riveting show but it kind of takes away from the illusion of a puppet show if the host is clearly visible behind the piano i liked when the camera sort of panned out and you could see that the piano player was sitting there the whole time he had a front row seat to the puppet action <laughs> Jealous. Oh yeah, I forgot he even creeps on the puppet. Uh, yeah. you and uh, you and Alice Irvin and you and Alice got something going or something? You guys you guys boyfriend girlfriend? You guys have puppet makeout sessions? <laughs> Describe it to me in detail. Boy, I like blondes. Oh, you? you like kissing boys, yes. don't you? Other adult performers included this guy, Bob Johnson. <laughs> I don't know 
why this is so funny to me. So they introduce Bob Johnson as a special guest. Our, our special, special guest. guest. Right. You bet. I want to introduce our special guest. He is uh, known around all nightclubs. He has made recordings. And um, he is a very personal... I'm sorry, did she just say he has made recordings? Here I thought the only guests on this show were going to be mediocre singers and a puppet show lady, but they found a guy who has made recordings. He has made recordings. I underestimated the show. So I'll sing you to sleep. So I'm watching Bob, and I'm like, this guy is clearly a professional singer. He's very good. He's way older than everybody else, and it's no fair, you know? It's no fair that he's going to show up all the kids and steal their thunder, and then this happened. After He was lip syncing. Darn you, Bob Johnson. Darn you. I guess this isn't that. No, it is. It is weird. Because the whole point of the show is that it's live from Frank's basement, you know? Imagine watching an episode of American Idol and one of the contestants comes on stage and lip syncs. So I started to watch his second performance and I guess this is not that funny, okay? I'm aware. I'm very self-aware. What's even funnier about Bob Johnson lip syncing is that he is holding a microphone that is on because he talks in between his songs, okay? Next, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to do a medley. So when the second song started, I guess they forgot to cut the feed of his mic because you can just barely hear it. You gotta pay close attention, but you can barely hear him like starting to accidentally sing along with the backing track. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the guy is clearly a good singer. Why not just <laughs> sing it? I also noticed that Bob actually took the initiative himself to go ahead and kiss Tilly. Shot in the dark, but I would imagine he was trying to avoid Frank asking him for a kiss. I'd rather really get you kiss. everywhere, I'll tell you. you. Bet. Okay. Did anybody catch Frank's response to that? <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 Tilly. Whoa, whoa. We only kiss children. Okay. Okay. Oh, we gotta take a break. We have to take a break because I heard there was a puppet show going on that I don't want to miss. Be right back. Hello, friends. We're back. And it's your lucky day today because Bob Johnson was not the only lip syncer to perform on Stairway to Stardom. There was also this girl, Araya Desire. And yes, that is her name. You can imagine how much fun Frank had with that one. Araya Desire. Uh, it's my desire, you know, her. She's my desire. Her whole thing was like lip syncing, but also kind of dancing, also hair flipping. It's so awesome, dude. There's no wrong or right. Love's burned out. Beautiful. I wish people still did stuff like this. Now all we get is people on TikTok who are perfectly choreographed and professional. Professionals are boring, Janet. We have another attractive young lady. Boy, this is my lucky day, huh? Yeah. She's nine years old. Ew. So little Melissa comes out. <laughs> Her dance was so bad, poor thing. She mostly just stood there and air played the piano. <laughs> that must be where Corey Feldman got it. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. She did some other moves. Better than I could have done, that's for sure. After this little girl's performance was the first time I saw Frank actually just give a kid a kiss without asking. He just went for it. Okay. <laughs> See another one right out of the cradle. Oh yeah, that's another weird thing I heard him say several times about the little girls. Right out of the cradle. Right out of the cradle. Right out of the cradle. Yeah, we don't need... Let's not. Frank. There were also a few stand-up comics that came on the show, and it is entirely possible that they were actually funny comedians, but just without a big audience to laugh, really without any audience laughing, I'm sure like whoever was there in the basement at the time laughed, but you couldn't really hear them. So it all just felt really uncomfortable and weird. It's also possible that the comedy just wasn't good. I don't like to say that. Comedians don't like to rip on other comedians, you know? But take this guy, for example, Wayne Rubin, who, despite impersonating many people and doing many different voices, never made one single facial expression throughout his entire set. The horses are on the track. It is now post time. In this race, fat lady, 10 pounds over. And it's cabbage by a head. I looked this guy up on IMDb. I was curious because he looks quite familiar. Like I feel, I felt like he was a famous comedian. And his IMDb biography literally says his career just never took off. 
so brutal so after wayne's bit frank and tilly were like interviewing him like they do all the other contestants and they ask him who his favorite comedian was who's your favorite comedian Oh, my favorite comedian. Well, I like Benny Hill. And I just barely caught Frank's response. Gotta listen real close. Well, I like Benny Hill. You oh, like I Benny Hill? Too. That's I, Frank's favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> you know, all the nice girls yep. on there. <laughs> Frank, you just can't help yourself, can you? And why didn't you ask Wayne for a kiss? Well, best of luck to you on your way to start it. You can really tell who Frank likes and who he doesn't like because not only does he not ask certain people for a kiss, but at the end of every episode, he has all the performers come up and stand still while he sings the outro song. And poor Wayne got completely cropped out on his episode. <laughs> Why have you forsaken Wayne? It's not fair. It's not fair how he treated Wayne. And trust me, Frank was no better at stand-up comedy than Wayne was. Like a chill one time and said, didn't I see you in Chicago? The fellow said, no, I've never been in Chicago. Well, come to think of it, I've never been there either. Must have been two, two other people. <laughs> uh, tell me. Uh, Hold on. Can we break that joke down a little bit? He asked his friend, hey, were you in Chicago? His friend says, no, I've never been to Chicago. Frank says, come to think of it, I've never been to Chicago either, so it must have been two other people. <laughs> Am I missing something? The next day. Hey, friends, it's several days later. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Frank's terrible comedy. <laughs> uh, you know, friends, it's not just the terrible comedy and the kid kissing and the sketchy comments. Frank has all kinds of weird quirks about his personality. First things first, he's a very close talker. Every single time he interviews these kids, you can just feel and smell his breath. There were so many other hilarious things about this show that could easily just go unnoticed if you weren't watching with a critical eye, you know? One of the things I got a kick out of, which is just how amateur and unprofessional the hosts were as hosts, especially when it came to the use of the equipment, like the microphone. <laughs> They're constantly interviewing people, but then not holding the mic up to the person's mouth. With who? With Al Griner first, and uh, now Half the time the hosts themselves would talk without holding the mic up to their mouth so you couldn't hear what they were saying. And you know, not because he's a friend of mine, but uh, he is he is Every now and then there was issues with the camera, like it would just go completely out of focus and we would get shots like this. And sometimes the hosts would even straight up forget they were doing a show and they would just start whispering to each other. Also interesting and worth noting, there was a quite obvious religious undertone to some of the stuff Frank would say to the kids. Like he would preach a little bit, you know, before kissing them. God, so, I love that name. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's the man, you know it, don't I you? Know. Yeah, anytime you have any problems or anything, don't be afraid to... Uh, ask him to help you out. He may have plans for you. Do I get a kiss? But what was weird is that he seemed quite unsure of a lot of his own advice. He would fumble around a lot and not really know what to say. You you hit you hit you hit my sore spot there. I thought I saw you full blacks. No. Mm -hmm. Oh. Must have been another pretty girl. Or sometimes he would ask the kids a question that they had already answered. And soon in the near future, I hope to be on Broadway. Would you like to be on a, on a Broadway show? I realize that this seems like I'm nitpicking, but I'm honestly just so fascinated at how low the bar was then and how this would never fly now, even if you ignore the kid kissing. You know, it was just such a simpler time when kids could do just okay performances in somebody's basement and get told they were really going places with their talent. <laughs> Well, you're going to go places. Think about how young performers sound now on shows like America's Got Talent. And how they sounded on this show. <laughs> And that's not to say that these kids are bad, like these this group of teenagers here who sang Why Do Fools Fall In Love. They're not bad, per se. It's just that they didn't really do anything. I saw four people, so I expected a four-part harmony, but they just sang the song in unison, just like how I would sing it in my car. <laughs> Zero theatrics, nothing added to the performance. They couldn't even manage a smile. And you would have thought the host just watched a Beyonce concert. We've only been together four weeks. Four weeks, beautiful. What are Isn't you that good just for together? four weeks? Four well, you know, friends, this kind of made me think about that time I got rejected for American Idol. Watching this show, I just can't help but wonder what if I had been born in the 50s and made it onto Stairway to Stardom in the 80s? Maybe my talents would have been appreciated. I can see it now. A storm was raging as the book shot from the sky. You stood there 
was away and then you left me to cry the wind was howling and the trees bent down in pain you had Suddenly through the fallen hail From my hair to my fingernails I felt a strength I had never known Oh, oh you took your love away And I realized this song is just okay I'm in a basement on TV Frank, please God, don't try to kiss me yeah. I'll sue you On that note, I gotta go This was an absolute blast Thank you so much for being here And remember, today's moral of the story Is that if you're a 65-year-old man Don't ask little girls to be your girlfriend. No, no, she don't want me. She don't want an old man. Bye. I love how Frank had to make sure he always performed multiple songs during every episode. Like, he didn't want people to take too much attention away from him. Well, I think I'll do a number. I ought to do a number myself. Take the blame. I'll always feel just the same. Oh, yeah, it wasn't just lip syncing. They had a whole band, like, airplay, like, fake fake play their th this guy is pretending to play the drums with a backing track it's amazing be on late night cause dave is hanging there <sighs> i'm a piece of trash this is giving me a football player shoulder i look like gary oldman and tiptoes <laughs> Do you guys remember being a kid and there would be certain grown-ups that did this? I had a counselor in fifth grade, Miss Robertson, and she could not talk to her students unless she was one inch away from their faces, just blasting her breath. And it always kind of smelled like herbs and it was the worst, second only to uh, dentist nose breath. But anyway, I digress. <laughs>